So the left has gone ballistic, crying foul, pounding the table, and calling President Trump everything from a Russian puppet to a traitor after his summit with Vladimir Putin. Trump's refusal to publicly condemn the Russian strongman and his sharp criticism of his own country for a relationship with Russia, which he said has never been worse, has led to a sudden outbreak of patriotism on the left. But leftists who make a habit of ridiculing traditional American patriotism have long since abandoned the high ground regarding Trump in general and the Russian Federation in particular. Their loud objections are akin to the boy who cried wolf. You know the story. They sound the alarm on everything Trump has said and done to the point where few outside the hard left even pay attention anymore. And that's before we even consider the left's warm embrace of Russia in the days of Soviet communist tyranny. Truth be known, when Russia was the Soviet Union, the Russians were never viewed as an enemy by American progressives. The salad days of Joseph Stalin and Nikita Khrushchev and Leonid Brezhnev were accepted or even embraced in most quarters on the left as the collectivist wave of the future. Typical of the left's betrayal was a letter written by powerful Senator Ted Kennedy to Soviet leader Yuri Andropov in 1983, urging him to pay no attention to the anti-Soviet rhetoric of then-President Ronald Reagan, promising that he and his fellow left-wingers would undermine Reagan at every turn and recommending placing Soviet officials on American TV to, quote, and this is a direct quote, appeal directly to the American people about the peaceful intentions of the USSR, unquote. But now that Russia has become, in their eyes, a right-wing pro-Trump oligarchy, leftists have suddenly sounded alarm bells about a Russian threat which is obviously in no way comparable to what it was in the days of Soviet rule. It's no secret that the American left was famously soft on the Soviet Union, an expansionist global power almost equal to the U.S., against whom we fought a 70-year Cold War and won. But now that the communists no longer run things in Moscow, Democrats and the left proclaim its successor government as dangerous and evil, the true evil empire. So when John Brennan, Barack Obama's CIA director, says Trump's statements in his joint press conference with Putin are, quote, worse than high crimes and misdemeanors and treasonous, he thinks we'll just forget about not only the fact that he's a proven liar, but his own admitted vote in the 1970s for a communist for president of the United States. And this guy deigns to call Trump a traitor? The great Victor Davis Hanson wrote about Brennan and his ilk, saying the following, If there is such a thing as a dangerous deep state of elite but unelected federal officials who feel that they are untouchable and unaccountable, then John Brennan is the poster boy. Brennan is typical of the careerist deep state. And Victor Davis Hanson outlines a psychological tactic known as projection, As he says, to square their own circles of lying, our so-called best and brightest loudly accuse others of precisely the sins that they themselves commit as a matter of habit. So the left is banking on the nation's short attention span and diminished understanding of history in yet another attempt to claim an imminent Trumpocalypse, much like their hysterical predictions about imminent catastrophe caused by global warming after similarly dire warnings about a new ice age just years earlier, the left carries on as if the nation has collective amnesia regarding their about face on the Soviet Union and Russia. And Brennan is hardly alone. Leftists ranging from congressional leaders like Senator Chuck Schumer and Representative Adam Schiff to hysterical opinion writers throughout the elite media, including the hateful Charles Blow of the New York Times, who authored a piece redundantly titled Trump, comma, treasonous traitor, have piled on with their own 
projections. They've engaged in big-time virtue signaling by condemning the president's meeting with Putin in hopes that we've forgotten the left's own disgraceful history regarding Soviet Russia. We haven't. We might well be inclined to consider and ponder the criticism of the Trump summit leveled by the likes of House Speaker Paul Ryan and others in the GOP because their own patriotism has never been questioned, and Trump is a fellow Republican. But when it comes to taking pseudo-patriotic leftist attacks on Trump seriously, most reasonable people have decided that Brennan, Schumer, Schiff, and all their leftist cohorts have become little more than the boys who cry wolf.